Alright guys, Hatch Comic here and today. Hope you're all doing better and enjoying your day so far. It may be April Fool say that these changes are no joke, or they are a joke, depending on your perspective, because the Boston Witch have blown it up completely. Three departures from their organization, two players, one coach is gone as well. The big bombshell dropping last night was on the Minnesota Rocker. There was a feeling over the last couple of days that Illy could well return to the Seattle Surge. Now it looks like he might be on his way to Rocker in place of Awakening. What's going on last night? Very much intrigue your thoughts in the comments below. Hit the like button if you enjoy. Subscribe if you're new as always. I greatly appreciate it. It. First of all, we've got to dive into it. Boston have made the moves. Asim is gone. Now, this isn't benched. This isn't like, you know what, we're going to move you to the sidelines for a little bit of time to see if we want to make another change going forwards. This is out of there completely. So, Asim is gone. Slasher is gone. Now, I think both of these are surprising to me for different reasons. I will say that given where Boston were, they could have justified multiple changes within this organization. The Asim one, I think, especially shows, as really does the Slasher one, that's they're basically admitting their mistakes. Bringing Slasher on was meant to be the talisman of the team, was on paper really meant to be, I suppose, the man to teach Snoopy the game and help him improve and learn. They're getting rid of Slasher, they're obviously keeping Snoopy, and they're getting rid of Asim and they're keeping Snoopy, right? So I think from both angles, the Asim one especially is indicative of just poor decision making because they brought him on after stage one, they've given him a stage, and now they've got rid of him, right? So that kind of shows they're admitting errors, I think, here, Boston, but maybe you can justify these changes from some angles. It's a very interesting scenario and we'll dive into it more in a second. That's not it though from the Boston Breach. They've also got rid of Josh. This is Denz's explanation but Josh is gone as well. He's now been there for some time working with their academy side. Was effectively assistant coach, S&D coach I'm guessing and their search was woeful. So this is justifiable. I heard for a few days now they were looking at a coaching change. Wasn't sure what it was going to be. Zed, of course, stays. I wonder how Josh will feel about this just because Zed and Dens were boys back to their player days. So maybe there's an argument that Zed says and Josh doesn't just because of the relationships, but it's, it's tough to read into. This is what Dens, who is their general manager, says. And like, I don't know if they know what they're doing over there in this camp. The issue is if, if Dens is clueless and doesn't know what he's doing, and I like Dens, I like these guys, but if he doesn't know what he's doing with regard to this roster, who makes the decision on that? Because at the end of the day, he's the general manager. He's the one that's um, making these calls. So as he goes on to say, as we evaluate our performance at the midpoint of the season, they're dead last, by the way, in the league. We recognise we have fallen well short of our expectations as well as our fans. Our goal at the start of the season was to have strong performances at each major to put us in the best position to win at the World Championship. Only four majors in. Time is not on our side. We believe that to reach our objective, significant change is needed. So Austin, Asim and Josh are gone. And uh, well, they're not staying on the bench or anything like that. So as Asim says, free agent. Obviously wasn't expecting this. Pretty speechless about the situation at the end of the day I gave it my all in that short period of time and it wasn't enough for them to keep me for the year so lots of reaction to this and for understandable reasons because bringing a seam in and getting rid of him but look it's a trend at this point a seam has come into many CDL teams over the last couple of years he has made some improvements on those teams I would say at times and you know but to be fair a lot of the teams he's been on haven't exactly been spectacular I think on a seam there's always two sides of the coin because there's the people that say oh you know the flank it's the flank friendship cheese and all this so they gas up their boy a seam and therefore some people say yeah seem great player therefore shouldn't have been dropped but also people will say well you know flank friendship cheese that's the only thing why people are actually saying anything about this and at the end of the day a seam has been a solid player but you know was he spectacular on this team like no i think this is justifiable it's just to me admitting a poor decision making in the camp because they brought him on not that long ago so clay says you know what i'm a little bit confused by the reaction here just because like i'm pretty sure people knew this was coming you know what i mean like I think we've known this a few days now, and it's still surprising that this has actually come true. But, you know, Clay obviously is surprised about this. Sib as well says dropping their best player is insane. So, yeah, I don't know. Was the team their best player? I think you could argue that all four of them were their best or worst players at certain moments because they were all not performing particularly well, I would say. And I think you can justify either way to get rid of certain individuals with who they're bringing in said. At the end of the day, right, their team was top 12. Like, they had a poor performance of the major... At that point, given the expectations and the intentions Boston have, anything is on the table. Like, I don't think it should be a massive surprise that Asim has gone anywhere. He's a solid player, for sure, but he's a solid player that tends to mill around the teams from, you know, top 5 to top 12, and he'll probably be back on one of those teams at some point in the future, right? But he's been on, what is it, five, six franchises now over the last five years. Vivid, we're going to discuss him in a second. He's the same. Slasher's basically the same as well. So it seems like Asim, Vivid, and Slasher, they're basically competing for how many organisations 
they can compete for. And has a seam as Kremp implies got screwed over by poor decision making? Sure. And actually it's worthy of consideration what these two can actually be as a duo because we're definitely going to discuss that going forwards. What's the next step for a seam? What's the next step for Slasher? There are a few teams I think those teams or those players could potentially improve in certain roles. And if Joe Deceives doesn't really deliver back on the Thieves starting lineup, there is an argument that a seam and Kremp could be a duo on Thieves. I'm not sure I massively like it, but it's been thrown around. Now, Priester actually replied as the following, and the feeling is that this wasn't necessarily a team decision, right? It's not like the players, I doubt Slasher wanted to get rid of a seam. I don't know what Snoopy thinks about this whole thing because, you know, Slasher and a seam, they've played together before to decent success. They've had some bad times. They won an event together on Gorillas back in the day. But um, yeah, Priest says, you know, good luck for effectively implying that he maybe wasn't so keen on this move, right? But the organization has decided it. That's how it's going to be. So this is what Octane says. Serial organizations truly have zero clue what they're doing. And there are a couple of organizations that exemplify this. Surge, which Octane had much experience on, are most certainly one of them. But also Boston, right? For as good of an organization as they are in terms of what they've done for the scene, coming in, taking things serious, paying the bag to get some top players on their team, running some phenomenal events over the last few years, they almost deserve more success than they've had. But, you know, nothing is deserved in a way. If you make poor decisions, if you hire the wrong people to make those decisions, then things are going to go wrong. And that's kind of what Octane's getting at. Now, Octane does go on to say that, like, look, there's an argument for anyone that has seemed to be replaced. But um, given that Asim is coming in just a month ago and has played, done a respectable job, and I think did improve that team initially to get rid of him, just feels like a bad decision. But at the end of the day, Boston are going to stick with Snoopy. This is the big debate about this team. Is that a good or a bad idea? The way I look at it is, Boston would love to be Toronto, effectively. What Toronto have done with their academy system, finding Scrappy, among others, but Scrappy especially, right? Because if you want to compete and win events, win world championships, win championships, you can't just rely on buying Simp and Abizi, right? You've got to develop that talent yourself, and that's what Toronto managed with Scrappy. That's what Boston see in Snoopy, and they clearly still do. We have seen it. He's a very talented player, but there are serious problems with his game and they haven't been able to develop and improve him. Is that a Snoopy problem? Is that a Slasher problem? Is that a coaching problem? Those are the questions. But look, Josh is gone. Slasher is gone. So maybe their feeling is that with a different structure, they can develop Snoopy into the player they need him to be because he's got the talent, this whole, you know, new Shotzi type vibe. It's there somewhere under the surface. The problem is that his comms just aren't particularly good. There's often times you'll go to a listening and you'll hear him call something out or, well, actually, let's say not call something else, and then his teammate dies because of it a few seconds later. And, you know, playing the game in the right way, I think I was hoping that Snoopy would be better and show more promise by now than he has. And the reasons why are a question. But Boston clearly feel like if they get rid of Snoopy, they're effectively admitting defeat. Does Snoopy have a higher ceiling than a seam? Yeah, in my opinion, he does. So I don't necessarily begrudge them this decision, but they've really got to show now that they're making a good call on this one because if they bring in beans for slasher and we know what beans as cobs are like right dead you know what i mean like we've said that before imagine that and then imagine that was snoopy's cobs as well man it, surely that's an absolute recipe for disaster no so I'm, I'm just not sure this is a good idea and as slasher says i'll be game ready whenever just want to compete with the team which kind of implies that he doesn't feel like they were competing as a team and it's interesting for slasher because if i was the coaching staff of that team i would have given slasher a lot of well i'd have been listening to slasher a lot on what he wanted to do as the veteran leadership figure with the team. Has he been great this season? No. Is he a better player on land than online? Yes. Has he had great success over the last few years and won an event in like most years he's played? Yes. Is he a world champion? Yes. So there's all these other things why I think Slasher is a valuable piece as is Priester. But, you know, to me, Slasher has been the better player than Priester over the last couple of years. But it seems to me like Slasher didn't feel like they were, you know, actually a team, right? And maybe that comes from the coaching staff. So he says, you know, need a few days to get out of this place. Where will he go next? That's a big question. RC's replies and says, yeah, they got you as well type thing, which is interesting because to me, the RCTs and Slasher situations are rather different. And even Snoopy says, glad I was able to learn from you. Wish you the best. So, um, you know, I'd want to know what Snoopy actually learns and whether this is, you know, their HR or their PR department saying, hey, Snoopy, can you just tweet this to Slasher, please? That would be great. Because um, I don't know if they necessarily 
necessarily feel this way about each other. The replacements that are rumoured, Pentagram, he has been thrown around as a potential CDL spot for some time. The feeling is that he's probably going to come in here. Is he a solid player? Yes. Could he do a job? Probably. But is he going to set the world on fire? As far as I'm concerned, no. And then Beans has been the other name to be thrown around. He puts this out last night to solve The Undertaker making his return. So I'm guessing that's what they're getting at here. The other possibility is Cammy, to be honest. Like, I thought about this for some time now that ever since Cammy joined the Boston Academy after his time on Thieves, that could be an option. So I guess we'll see what they come up with here, Boston. But that is how it stands. Now, where does Slasher and the team go next? I think there's a couple of options. Slasher, to me, should, on paper, walk into Los Angeles Grillers if they want him. But whether they do want him, that's another debate. Or whether Slasher actually wants to go there, right? Because none of those players we just mentioned are going to the top four teams. Then you're looking further down. There is an argument that a seam for Purge on Vegas, that actually could be viable. But right now, if you look at the numbers from stage two, Purge versus a seam... They're actually pretty damn similar, and maybe Purge in some ways was slightly better, and they've got that existing chemistry with the team, and Purge is doing some in-game leadership stuff. There's a debate on that, for sure. I think on Slash's side, Gorillas for Assault makes sense. If he wanted to go there and, you know, we don't have much money that you have, they probably wouldn't pay Slasher much. If he does want to play, that's an option, but still it is Gorillas and they're not necessarily the greatest talent in the world. And apart from that, it's kind of difficult to say. Maybe there's a world on Surge where Slasher could make sense if, you know, with Arsity has gone. Maybe there's a world when a boozer slasher AR partnership kind of works. Few things to say on that. Even Thieves, I could kind of see it, but I'm not sure slasher ghosty. Feel like they might butt heads a little bit. And then a seam, I think, has maybe a couple of more options. But, you know, the fact that they're full free agents opens the door to um, they're making a move. They don't have to be bought out or anything. They can just go wherever gives them an offer. And I, I do think the dominoes will continue to fall as a result of slasher and a seam being available over the next few days. But we've got to talk about Rocker because the rumour had it they were going to trial Gunless. The feeling is that Wake is gone and therefore they need a flex player effectively to come in alongside Accuracy. We talked a long time ago on the Dope Jake show and on this channel, I'm pretty sure, about Illy to Rocker making so much sense. But it didn't seem like it was going to happen because after everything that went down with Illy during Major 1 benched, you know, off the Seattle surge for reasons that we still don't fully understand. Was it a league suspension? Was it, you know, mandated by surge themselves? Even Parasite said on stream the other day that, I mean, it was only, he said it for like one second, I won't share the clip, basically he said that his family have got involved, Illy's family have got involved in the situation. But all of a sudden, Jake Kelly's reporting that Wake and Vivid are going to be gone. I mentioned this as well, that Wake and Vivid is a bit of a package deal because, you know, they're friends, they're teamed together before they came into this Rocker team. And Vivid, again, like, I think the eye test shows that Vivid is a good player. And I do think he's a good player. But there's clearly a reason why he keeps getting dropped, right? You've got to think about it at this point. He's been on so many teams that he's got, um, you know, kicked off of. There was thoughts about putting Vivid to an AR. Vivid brings pace. That's what he brings. And I think if you get rid of him, you are potentially going to struggle for pace. That is the concern I have about making this move. But still, it seems to be a decision that for whatever reason, teams still keep on making. And Wake and Vivid, apparently, are going to be gone with Illy and Standy coming in. Standy, of course, talented player, questions about the way he plays the game. But if there's anybody, you know, there's very few players that I feel like can get the best out of Standy. One of them is probably Lamar Accuracy, who's eye-gelling this team right now. And of course, they've had success together in the past. Well, they've played together in the past. Success is maybe a bit of a stretch from that time in Vanguard or whatever it was. But still, I feel like there's some potential there. But the Illy move, that's the exciting one, right? Because Illy for Wake on paper made so much sense. But it was just like, well... If Surge have still got Illy, as they do, based on his bio and everything, then why would they not just bring him back in? That's the weird one to me. Like, if Illy is available, if he's, um, you know, whatever was going on, and we've obviously speculated on this, if Illy is fully healthy again, and he is allowed to play by the league, given the speculation that was going around, then why wouldn't Surge just put Illy back in? But uh, I don't know what's going on at Surge. Apparently, Rocker is saying, yeah, we'll get him. Fantastic. And this actually makes a lot of sense for that Minnesota Rocker team. So that would mean dominoes are going to fall. I mean, you've got Wake, Vivid. Potentially, they're going to be like unrestricted free agents. You've got a Seaman Slasher on the market. Surely other teams in that, you know, certainly five through eight ballpark, but even, you know, nine through 12 are going to think, yeah, this is our chance to make a move to try and level up going towards the world championship. So obviously only rumors for now. We've had a couple of confirmations. I'm sure there's more going to be coming soon over the coming days. So very much interested in your thoughts on all this stuff in the comment section below. Hit the like button if you enjoyed. Subscribe if you're new 
take care, and I'll see you next time. I got rid of him for, I don't know why. By the way, yeah. when he asked them, when Asim asked them, I mean, I'll let Asim tell the story. Asim, Asim could say this stuff. He could say this stuff. But apparently the one thing they did, I don't think he'll care if I say this. The, the one thing they did say is he was just the odd man out. He's like, why me? And then he just said, well, you're the odd man out. Like, that's what they told him. So like, What the freak does that mean? I don't know. I don't what do you know. mean the odd man out? That's what he's saying. I said, bro, what it, did you, I, because, like, when you get dropped as a player, right, this is what I was asking Asim, I was like, when you get dropped, like, don't you, like, you want to know why you got dropped, like, what was, like, the main reason, was there something that, even just for, like, knowledge of yourself, because if you were doing something wrong, you can learn from it, and, like, if he gets back in there, he can fix that, you know what I mean, like, just to be a better player, like, ask him, like, what are things that you can work on, what are, you know, ask him, and it wasn't much feedback back, it was just kind of just like, well, I mean, it, you know what I mean? It's just kind of like... You the know odd man I mean? out. Yeah, the odd man yeah. out. That's what they said. 